dog. Zazzles also wants to say hi because um, she just keeps knock knocking over my tripod. So I think she really just wants to be involved. She's purring. She never purrs, not a lot. She's a very quiet kitty. Oh, oh, she also really hates to be held. Anyway, hello, welcome to a new vlog. Um, this is going to be a reading vlog and there's Zazzles knocking over my tripod again. Do you see this? Do you see this? Yeah. Um, it's crooked and I can't promise that the cat won't knock it over. But hello, welcome to a reading vlog. This is going to be a very interesting reading vlog. I'm very excited for it. I'm going to be rereading the Hunger Games trilogy. Um, so, in case you are not on the internet, um, if you're not on TikTok, there is a big Hunger Games renaissance, if you will. Just like how, you know, a year or two ago we had the Twilight Renaissance. It's the Hunger Games turn. And I love that for us. And just as the Twilight Renaissance made me reread the Twilight books, here we are. Um, and I figured it was apt timing anyway because um, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes comes out in six months or so. Um, I might reread that before the movie. I don't know. That was a really hard book to read. Um, but I love, love, love the original trilogy. So I'm really excited. So again, in case you, I don't know, are living under some sort of rock for the last 15 years, the series includes The Hunger Games. Ooh, knocking things over. Catching Fire and Mockingjay. And I have these original covers in hardback. Um, I don't have the hideous new covers. Um, I bought this circa 2012, um, this box set. So I am super freaking excited. Um, I did reread these. <laughs> recently is a relative term. So I read them originally in the eighth grade um, and binge read them. I couldn't put them down. And then in, shout out to my eighth grade English or social studies teacher, I don't remember what she taught, who told me to read them um, because there was a movie coming out. And then in, I don't know, sophomore or junior year of college, I reread them listening to the audiobooks. Tatiana Maslany, who is an actress, she currently plays She-Hulk in the MCU. She um, has a version where she reads the audiobooks and they are fantastic. Um, and I really, really enjoyed those. But since then, I have not reread the books. And that was four years ago, three years ago. I'm not gonna count that. Um, but I'm very excited to do this. I thought I would just take you along as I reread this series, relive the Hunger Games Renaissance with me, um, and just kind of see if my perspective or anything has changed on this series um, as I grow older. So I honestly, I think I'll probably think a lot of the same things I thought before. Um, just going in, I still, I hate Gail. I think he's I mean, not a terrible person, but he makes a lot of terrible choices. Um, and he's terrible for Katniss, I will say that. Um, we'll see if the same moments still kill me just the same. Uh, they probably will. Um, and if Peeta is still just like the best character ever written. So I'm very, very excited. I think this is going to be good. Hello, an update for my Hunger Games reading vlog. It's actually been a couple weeks but I finished the first one I finished the Hunger Games it took me two or three weeks to read I'm in just such a bad reading slump but I obviously still love these books I just have not really been in the mood to read but I tapped just a few things and I just wanted to talk about some overall thoughts um I don't know I have to figure out why I tabbed these pages in the first place but um I think this was just the first reaping um wow i didn't realize that happened so quickly into the book um but this is when she volunteers um and i think one of the most interesting things about that scene not only in the book but in the movie is district 12's silence they all just stand there when katniss runs up to the stage um and i think that makes for a much more impactful scene and then let's see what this was. 
I also had wanted, I thought I marked the page about the A box. I don't know if that's this page or, um, oh, that, that is this page. So I really would like to know, and I, she probably is just dead, but the red haired girl who, I don't think you ever see her in the movie, but it's in a couple of scenes in the first book and maybe in the second one. No, I think just in the first one. Um, the Avox that she's like, do I wreck it? Like, have we met before? And everyone's like, no, don't talk about it. And then she's the one that helps clean up her room when she like has the fit and like destroys everything. Um, and she, re she realizes where she recognizes her from. She'd been out in the woods and saw this girl with, with a boy trying to run away essentially. And they were caught by the Capitol and, um, punished and became Avoxes. So I'd really like to know more about what happened to her. Um, it's a very interesting story. I think most likely she's probably just dead. She was probably killed by the Capitol, but, um, or maybe it comes up later in the second or third book. I'm not sure, but, and then the only other thing I tabbed in here, I mean, obviously lots happened in this part, but, um, I tabbed a scene. Um, oh, I think this is just kind of when Peta and Katniss are finally back together. They find each other in the games and they're able to work together. It's always such an interesting, like the dynamic, how they're constantly shifting in the games. Um, and it was, what I thought was really interesting is I had kind of forgotten that aspect of the games. Like, yes, I knew Katniss and Peta both won, but I had forgotten the details because it's been so long since I've read this or watched the movie that I forgot that that was a mid game rule change. Um, but then it was just, oh, it's just so interesting. And the, the quality in the writing of these books is so unmatched to almost anything, like any of the other big series. Like this one is just so phenomenal. I love PETA. He's an icon. He is just one of the best characters ever written literally ever. I love him. Um, and getting to see his emotional journey versus Katniss's is so interesting. I almost wish that we had more perspective from Peeta because Katniss has such tunnel vision. She decides that it's this one way and it takes her so long to change her perspective. Um, she d like, she'll believe one thing without any evidence and then it takes so long for her to realize that maybe that's not the truth. Um, so it's really interesting. Um, I wish we could see PETA's point of view more closely in more detail. Um, I actually saw a TikTok that said something kind of like that, where especially reading this series the first time when I was in middle school, I just believed everything Katniss was saying. because I just believed everything that Katniss believed. I didn't have any thought process of kind of thinking outside of Katniss's own like sphere of belief but like she believes Peta is trying to wrong her when he says that he loves her in those first interviews she believes that such as and shots happens whatever it is but and so like as the reader you just automatically believe Katniss but later I feel like it's like when you're reading it, when you're older, you're able to kind of see past Katniss's point of view, if that makes sense, and be like, well, that doesn't really make sense, Katniss. Maybe we should have thought that through a little more. But um, Rue's death still got me. Still so painful. I think it's the hardest part and possibly the whole series. Um, and the implications, like reading that in this book, knowing what happens in the other books, knowing what could be happening outside in the districts um, is so painful. And that's part of why I like the movie so much. I, I stand by that these movies are the best book to movie adaptions out there, period. I love Harry Potter. I love another one I can't think of. I can't think of anything else. I think I'm gonna love the new Percy Jackson, but you cannot beat these adaptions. They do them perfectly, especially the first movie. And yes, they leave stuff out, but they capture that like uneasy feeling so well and in the movies the flash like they have the flash scene to um district 11 when rue dies oh it gives me the like goosebumps just thinking about it it's absolutely like genius in a way of storytelling 
um, to pull you into that moment and kind of get a bigger picture of what's going on in all of the society. So I loved rereading this. I know it took me a long time, but that's by no fault of the book. Um, that's me being in a reading slump and me starting the office. Um, I have started Catching Fire. I am about 60 pages in. I'm hoping to read this one a lot faster. Um, this has always been what I consider my favorite book out of the trilogy, so I am really excited to get into this. I already am like kind of, it's interesting to see Katniss and Peeta have to reconcile everything that happened in the first one, not only as a relationship, but as individuals. Um, one thing that I was just reading that I, is something that I actually do wish they included a little bit more in the movie is that Peeta paints everything that happen, happens in the games as his way of like processing everything that happened as like a therapy for himself almost. We see him paint Rue when they have the um, like point assignment thing in the movies, um, but we don't see much more painting than that. And I wish that had been like briefly included because it's a very interesting detail. But I'm gonna go keep reading and I will update you when I'm done with Catching Fire. Hello, another reading vlog update. I started Mockingjay last night, realized I never wrapped up Catching Fire. Also, I can't believe this reading vlog is taking me so long. It's been weeks that I've been reading these books. Um, so that really tells you about my reading mood right now. Um, no matter what I'm reading, I just don't, just not really in a big reading mood. But let's wrap up Catching Fire. This is one of my favorite books of all time. It was just as incredible this time. Um, let's just kind of go over some of the places that I marked and kind of wanted to talk about. Um, the whole Victory Tour is really like incredible to read. Um, it's painful um, and like haunting and stressful because Katniss is obviously stressed because of Snow's um, threats. But I think the part um, that like really gets me comes a little bit later on. Um, but anyway, this is a beginning of chapter 10 before the quell, the quarter quell is announced. Um, and this is actually about um, something that they do answer later on, but I marked this at the point, at this point, because I wasn't sure if this question was ever answered. Um, but, and I wish this is something that had been in the movie and it's not. Um, but Katniss is out hunting um, and she finds these people who have escaped District 8, I believe. Um, and she brings them to her father's, like, cabin by the lake, um, and all that. But I just am so impressed that she finds these people, and they have escaped, and they have the Mockingjay symbol, um, so it shows how early on Katniss's, like, the symbol of her, of the Mockingjay, caught fire, for lack of a better word, in the districts, um, and Katniss is just so unaware of it um and it's really it just is really interesting and I marked um this chapter because I I was wondering whatever happens to these characters it's Bonnie and Twill um they're from District 8 and they escaped um because there's the uprising in 8 after everything that happened um and they sneak out in um peacekeeper uniforms and their goal is to get to district 13 which at this point we do not know that it exists um where i am in mockingjay right now it looks like they did not survive they must have died in the woods or something or maybe that'll be further answered somewhere else in mockingjay and i just don't remember but yeah so i just thought that was wild and then the next thing i have marked is the announcement of the quarter quell which i wish well I feel like I must have known, I wonder if it explains what happens. Like, going into Catching Fire, did I know they were going back into the arena? I'm not sure I did. Um, I was looking at, like, the summary on the back. It doesn't. They don't mention anything about the quarter quell in the summary anyway. So I, I wish I could remember reading this book for the first time. Um, one thing I remember reading this book for the first time is that I read the last page first. Um, and if you know what the, is on the last page in this book, that was wild. Um, why did that? I don't know. But I must have not known, like, no one knew about the quarter quell going into this book. So, um, that's 
wild and it's even more wild for Katniss. Um, but it's one of my favorite scenes in the series as well as in the movies. Um, Katniss finding out about the quarter quell. Um, and I, I think it's one of the most interesting characterizations. There's two poster notes on this page instead of one. Um, in that Katniss, it like really shows who each character is. Katniss breaks down. She can't handle that trauma at that moment. And as strong as Katniss is, as amazing as a character as she is, it makes sense that that's her reaction. That's always been her reaction. She works robotically when she needs to, but there is always a breaking point with her. Peta, um, you know, is sad, but he immediately starts working how he can protect Katniss. That's his instinct. Hamish immediately starts drinking and scheming, um, trying to figure out what they're all going to do. So that was just horrendous. And I think one of the most interesting thing, and in, in Katniss and the other victors comment on this throughout the book, but I do not believe that the envelope that was written for the 75th quarter quell originally contained that the victors or the tributes would be chosen from the existing pool of victors. I think Snow changed that. And knowing what we know from A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, I could see Snow doing that. Speaking of A Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, um, I don't remember if I said this in the intro, but originally, I, I so I have read that book. There's a reading vlog on my channel for it. Um, if you watch that, you will see that I kind of hated that book, which is really surprising because I love the Hunger Games trilogy, but I had such a hard time reading a book from the point of view of Snow because I hate him and like, why am I doing this? I just didn't really like the book. In the time that I have been reading and filming this, um, the trailer, for, the first trailer came out and it looks incredible. So I um, am thinking I might actually end up really liking the movie and then liking the book because of that. Anyway, um, let's see. Oh, here's the reaping. Um, they, you know, pull Hamish's name and he come and obviously PETA, dis um, PETA volunteers right away. I think the, the book does a good job of showing this, but the movie does an even better job of how emotional Effie is in this, that she doesn't want to be doing this. Even though she comes from the capital and she believes in the Hunger Games because she doesn't know anything else, I like how clear it is that she doesn't want to be doing this. And then the other thing that's interesting, um, which oh, her wig is a metallic gold. I wonder if that has to do with their gold trinkets. Um, but the fact that they're not allowed to say goodbye makes me think even more that this was just something that Snow planned. Oh, this is, I marked this because they are watching the tapes from previous Hunger Games. Watching Hamish's games, I would give anything for a book of Hamish's story. I think it's just incredible how he uses the force field like Katniss eventually will. is just incredible and I think there's so much depth there. There's so much more we could explore with Hamish and yes, it's not like there's a happy ending. Hamish wins his games, but at what cost? And then he loses his entire family because he pisses off the capital by using the shield in the way that he does, the force field. Um, but I just think that there's so much more to explore there, and I would give anything for a Hamish, like, spinoff story. Um, I think that's what we should got instead of Snow, but whatever. Um, I'm still excited for that movie. Um, oh, this is something I marked. Um the 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 new avox um as another punishment to katniss was someone from district 12 darius which i'll be honest i don't really remember who that is but i marked it because i knew it was someone from district 12. um also by the way did anyone else n know that it was greasy say i for the last 10 years i've always said greasy sue but this reread i noticed it's spelled s-a-e not s-u-e <laughs> Anyway, um, let's see. Um, I was trying to think of if there was any other reason I marked this page, but I think it's just uh, that the Avox is the guy from District 12, which was just another way to torment Katniss. It was horrendous. Um, it's kind of crazy how much of this book is actually not spent in the games um, and how little of it is spent in the games 
um, even though they have such a great impact on the story. Um, oh, this is actually the last spot I marked because then I just kind of binge read the end of it, but lots of important stuff happens in the games, and I'll talk about them in a second, but, um, at the, right before the games start, Katniss and Vita on their last night go up to the roof and eat, and, um, all these pages I keep accidentally using two post-it notes instead of one, <laughs> um, because they're see-through post-it notes, and anyway, um, the way that they talk on that last night, um, and almost kind of just forget, they don't forget, but they are able to let go of what's happening at that moment, and they just kind of exist as they are, um, and they don't, there's not even a lot of text on the page, it's a very short amount, it's like two paragraphs and, and two paragraphs, it's not even a whole page, um, but they're able to just find some peace and calm before the storm. Um, and it was just, it's a really special moment. And I wish that's another one that had been included in the movie. Because they have that a moment like this before the first Hunger Games in the book and in the movies. But at this point they know each other so much better. And it's just much more like emotionally charged. And I really, really like this moment that they take before the games start. And then I don't have anything else marked, but... Let's talk about the 75th Annual Hunger Games, the Quarter Quell. Um, it's horrendous, obviously. I think one of the most interesting parts about the Quarter Quell are the, the acceptance of allies and seeing how that plays out on page and on screen. Um, Joanna and Finnick, I think, are the most notable. Um, they're so interesting to read, but also, like... I really, and I said this with The Hunger Games, and I, it's, it rings true for Catching Fire and Mockingjay. Um, I don't know if this story would work if it was not from the point of view of Katniss, because she's so clueless, but like in a good way. <laughs> um, she sees things the way she sees them, and when you're reading it from her perspective, it makes sense, but then later when you have more information, like how Katniss, or I mean Finnick and... Um, Joanna were involved like it just makes all the difference um and it makes the story so much more just crazy um and sad and wild um so that's why I was I was thinking I've been thinking a lot about as I reread them how different it could have been if it was from someone else's point of view I think it truly only works with Katniss at the forefront because she doesn't realize the power she has um and it, for her all the time it always just comes down to the people that she loves and she doesn't really realize the bigger picture till much farther on and I would I mean I would argue she doesn't really see the big picture in all of its truth until the very end of Mockingjay when um, she makes the decision that she does which if you have read them or seen the movies you know what I'm talking about but I will save that discussion for Mockingjay um, Anyway, that's my Catching Fire update. Um, I can't believe this vlog is taking me so long, but it is what it is. I am about 100 pages into Mockingjay, um, and I'm hoping to finish it fairly soon, but who knows with me. Um, I kind of also thinking about renting the audiobook and kind of following along, because Tatiana Maslany reads the audiobooks, and I do really love those adaptions with her, but I don't know yet. Anyway, um, I'm going to read some today, and I will update you whenever I am done. Hello. Coming with you to close out this reading vlog. Um, a very tired me is doing it anyway. But I finally finished Mockingjay. This reading vlog took me so much longer than I ever thought it would. I don't know why this reread just, like, took me... It took me... I think it took me, like, four or five weeks, which seems insane for three books. Um, but I finally finished Mockingjay on a drive, so let's go ahead and go through the things I've tabbed. Overall, this book is brilliant, and I, like, I don't know if any other series, and I'm not even, like, I'm not even gonna, um, narrow it down to, like, YA series or sci-fi or dystopian, just any series, period. Um, I may have other series that I consider more so my favorite, um, or books that I enjoy more, but, like, when it comes to writing, The Hunger Games, I think, is the best written series of our time. 
and I will stand by that. I've like, it's not Game of Thrones. It's not, I don't know, some other famous series I can't think of the name of, but um, I, I truly think it's this. Um, I'm, it's, I'm really tired and it's, I think that's showing. Um, so on page 36, let's see, um, I marked, oh, I thought this was interesting. So um, they were talking about how people in the capital um, even as soon as the quarter qual was happening, we're like hoarding food. Um, and Katniss was just noticing like, they're here, they've never been hungry a day in their lives, but they're hoarding food while people out in the districts don't even have access to food. Um, and I just thought that was really interesting and maybe a little too, um, indicative of real life sometimes. So that was fun. I think that's one thing that um she does so incredibly well is the parallels she draws in her world in Pan Am versus the real world and she's drawing them without you even really realizing it is just insane and brilliant um let's see page 99 um oh this is one of the most interesting parts it's one of the strongest points in the movie too I think um in that she, Katniss, they go to District 8, they go to the hospital, they're filming all that um, content for the like little commercials that they make. Um, and when she directly address, addresses the camera and is directly addressing President Snow, she just does a really incredible speech. It's got the um, really famous quote, um, you can torture us and bomb us and burn our districts um, to the ground, but do you see that um, the fire is catching and if we burn, you burn with us. I think that's one of the most iconic scenes. Um, so that was obviously really interesting. A lot of stuff um, happens in District 8. And what's so interesting about, which actually kind of leads into this next post-it note fairly well, what's so interesting about this book and I think you see bits of it in The Hunger Games and you see bits of it in Catching Fire as well. But in Mockingjay, she's like oscillating between functioning and non-functioning. And it's written so well that like it's it works so perfectly for the story because you're only getting bits and pieces of what's going on. Because sometimes Katniss cannot physically handle or mentally even process what's going on. And I think that's a very realistic take to have. Um, and the way it's written just works really well. Um, and it's really painful to read. And sometimes it's frustrating to read because you wanna know what's going on, but it makes the most sense in the storytelling aspect. So I just really love that. Um, and then there's a couple things on page 150. One, um, I, I went into this book not remembering really many of the details, so that was traumatizing in itself. Um, but she is talking to Prim, and Prim mentions that they're talking about training her to be a doctor, and that just really hurt because it's not fair. It's not fair. I mean, none of the deaths that happen in this book, other than maybe one, arguably, are not fair. Um, but to see such a bright future for Prem, even among the darkness and the terribleness of what could be happening. Um, the fact that she could have done what she loved um, and been trained to do it and she never even got a chance. Um, but then the other thing that I had marked on this page, um, Prim is much more wise than I think Katniss ever gives her credit for. Um, but she says, Katniss, I don't think President Snow will kill PETA. If he does, he won't have anyone left you want. He won't have any way to hurt you. Um, and it reminds her of something Joanna had said. They can't hurt me. I'm not the. I'm not like the rest of you. There's no one left I love. Which makes Joanna one of the most interesting characters. I think she deserves more attention. Um, but then Katniss goes on to say, So what do you think they'll do to him? And Prim says, Whatever it takes to break you. And that line becomes like a reoccurring... Um, motif in the rest of the book that I think is just really really interesting um, and really painful so next on page 163 
um, they were talking about, um, oh, they were filming a, um, commercial thing, and this is when Katniss really starts to realize what's going on with PETA, like, she knows that they're using PETA against her, but I think it just really hits her in this moment, and that's kind of what I was talking about, how, um, she oscillates between functioning and non-functioning um and like sometimes it just will overwhelm her um and I think that's very indicative um and very well written of of Katniss's PTSD and how it is portrayed in the book and it's never I don't think it's ever really explicitly said in such words but it might also be a thing of they don't really use the same terminology as we would in the real world um but I just thought it was a really strong moment um and it was a really good moment between Hamish and uh Katniss because Katniss just breaks down and everyone else is like what's going on um and Finnick and Hamish because they're the other two um survivors they understand why she's upset right away and Hamish tries to comfort her and it's just um, I don't know if sweet's the right word because it's a terrible situation, but it was it was a heartwarming moment between them of him doing what he could to help her. Next, page 178. Um, oh, this was something... I will have to rewatch the movie if this is included in the movie or not because I also have only watched the Mockingjay movies like a couple of times because they're so sad. Um, I've watched the first two movies plenty of times, but I've only watched the the Mockingjay movies a couple of times, so I don't know if this is included in the movies or not, but um, this is just Finnick telling his story um, about all the years he was in the Capitol as a victor and what President Snow would do, um, that he would basically sell him off to the highest bidder um, because of he was considered desirable. Um, and if you refuse, he kills someone you love, so you do it. Um, and that's why I'm interested, at some point I would like to do a reread of, ball of A Ballad and Songbirds and Snakes, because it's so hard to reconcile the snow that we see in that book with this one. Like, they just feel so disconjointed. And like, yes, snow in A Ballad of Songbirds, Songbirds and Snakes, it's such a mouthful of a title. Um, he's evil, obviously but he's so different than the snow that we see, you know, 60 years later. Um, so I'd be very interested in rereading that to see if I can kind of find some more connections because this snow is just despicable, so. Okay, next, 209. Oh, I think, I, this is another moment that I will have to rewatch the movie to remember if this is in the movie. Um, I think it is, but honestly, I'm not sure. This is when they are in District... District 2? I think. Oh, they're in one of the districts. Like, one of the, um, like, higher-up districts. Um, trying to cut off the power supply, I believe, to the capital. And, um, it's when they bomb the mine the elevators and to kind of flush out all of those people all of those workers and Katniss just loses it and I think what's so interesting about Katniss's point of view and I think is the main commentary throughout this series like social commentary is that Katniss for the most part she fights out of necessity but she doesn't she's never like fighting for the cause like she is fighting against the capital that's not what i'm saying but she's not fighting out of pure morality she not like gail is she's fighting because she doesn't want to live the life she's been living all this time um and she doesn't want her family to gail and a lot of district 13 see it differently um and i think um, it's much easier to sympathize with Katniss's point of view, um, to understand Katniss's point of view, because she doesn't want all of this to be happening. She doesn't want there to be a war, but she knows there needs to be, to an extent. But she also, she talks about how, like, and she, I, she has a conversation somewhere around this part with Gail. It's like, you know, our, our 
were from a mining district. Like, you know what it's like down there. How could you willingly subject these people to it, whether they are involved or not? So I thought that was a really interesting scene. Um, 2.23. We, um, this is just a little conversation between Plutarch and Katniss. Um, and I thought this was just a really interesting, um, detail because Suzanne Collins' mind is just, she's just, uh, genius. So, um, in the capital, it says 13 was used to hardship, whereas in the capital, all they've known is Panem et Sir, Sir Senses. I don't speak Latin. Um, and he says, it's a saying from a thousand years ago, written in a language called Latin about a place called Rome, he explains. It translates into bread and circuses. Um, and that's where they get the name Panem. And I think that's uh, very telling. And we, could, we, love a, we love a good like Latin, you know, uh, saying t as an Easter egg. So, page 271. We have skipped ahead to where... Peta is alive again. Well, he's back. He's always been alive, obviously. Um, and he's trying to work through the hijacking, and it's incredibly painful. Um, I just like this entire scene. He said, like, here's a part where he says, ally, friend, lover, victor, enemy, fiance, target, mutt, neighbor, hunter, tribute, ally. I'll add it to the list of words I use to try and figure you out. The problem is I can't tell what's real anymore and what's made up. The whole thing is just insane. And then Phoenix says, then you should ask. That's what Annie does, because Annie has a lot of the same problem, isn't able to kind of tell what's real and what's not. Um, and then they kind of sit in silence for a few minutes. And then Peter turns to Katniss and says, your favorite color is green. And she responds, that's right, and yours is orange. Not bright orange, but soft like the sunset. At least that's what you told me once. Um, and then she just kind of spits out um, this really this really good um, paragraph. She says, you're a painter, you're a baker, you like to sleep with the windows open, you never take sugar in your tea, and you always double knot your shoelaces. And then she just gets up and leaves. Um, but it's, it's, I love seeing these little moments where she's kind of realizing how much PETA matters to her. Um, and then, let's see, next, page 313. Here's another scene that I don't remember happening. Um, the last, like, 75 pages are just absolute bloodshed. It's horrendous to read. Um, but this is when, let's see, what just happened here? Oh, this is this is Finnick's death. So a lot of people from District 13 have already got killed. Um, I think some of the camera people got killed. And now on page 312 and 313, Finnick gets killed. Um, and I, I just think, I think if we're talking about most unfair deaths, it's probably pr Prim. Um, but Finnick, I think, hurts the most. I don't know they all suck um but I think what's kind of hard and I actually it's kind of the same for Prim too is the but Katniss isn't allowed time to grieve Finnick right away like she is with Prim um but Finnick's death is it's one paragraph and that's that and it's over and then um I this part just kills me but she says it's as if I'm Finnick watching images of my life flash by the mast of a boat a silver parachute, Mags laughing, a pink sky, Beatty's trident, Annie in her wedding dress, waves breaking over rocks, then it's over. Um, so that sucks. Um, and we're just going to move on. I hate that that is in the book, but I also understand storytelling wise why it's there. I just hate it. <sighs> Next, let's see. Here is where they're kind of fitting through um the capital trying to get to snow's um thing house whatever you want to call it um i have no idea why i marked this page though oh 
this was just for one line. So they're talking about how they're setting off the bombs in the capital, trying to destroy the rebels. They're like strategically setting the ones off that are hopefully kill rebels that are there. And PETA, of all people, says, I bet it's killing Plutarch not to be in the control room on this one. Because when it all comes down to it, this war was just another Hunger Games. So, and Plutarch definitely saw it as that, as an orchestrator. Um, and yes, he, in the end, he's on the right side, but it's still just another Hunger Games. And then my, na my last thing is a scene I definitely don't remember in the book, or in the movie, or either, to be fair. Um, I remember Coin proposing another Hunger Games, which is just absolute, like, just pure stupidity. Um, and, like, they say humans repeat themselves. And I think at one point in the series, Peta says something like, maybe we should just wipe ourselves out, wipe ourselves out and let her better species take over. And sometimes he's right. Um, but what I was really surprised that I did not remember is that not only did um, Coin suggest this, but at the time of the vote, Katniss agrees. Um, and I think... I think if it had happened any time before Prim died, I think Katniss would have voted no. Um, and I think if it had happened with more time, like not directly after Prim's death, I think she would have voted no. Um, but then what I think is the most interesting thing is in that moment she has like that fit of anger and she votes yes. Um, but then in my one of my favorite scenes of the entire series. She changes her decision, obviously, and shoots the arrow at Coin. And just that mo that moment in the book and that moment in the movie, like cinematically, is just so, so good and so well written and s just perfectly encapsulate, encapsulates, is that a word? Um, the entire series, the entire theme. And it's just amazing. And then, my favorite, my favorite epilogue of all time. I love the epilogue. Um, I think in this case, a lot of people don't like the like, oh, they got married and had kids in the epilogue thing. I love that in any epilogue, but I also think it is most perfect in this epilogue. Um, I think it's what needed to happen and it's beautiful and I love it. And the people that come back to District 12, they just live their lives as they're supposed to. Um, without too much interference and I think the person who does end up taking over the government the girl from District 8 does a really beautiful job I'd like to think um, in rebuilding the whole country so that is my Hunger Games reread thon um, I don't know why it took me so long but I had a lot of fun these books are incredible um, I'm really looking forward to a ballad of songbirds and snakes but this video was insanely long, so I'm going to sign off. Um, I upload book content when I can. I've got a Disney vlog coming out next after this, and I will talk to you guys next time. Bye.